All right, guys, I've charged up. So I'm going to read you uh, chapter 11 of Revelation. I'm going to try to explain as I go so that I won't have to make a whole video about explaining what I just read because that takes up too much time and space right here. Okay, so we're going to do Revelation 11. We've done 8, 9, and 10. I've done the explanation video. So this is Revelation 11, and, and this says, An angel and seven thunders. Okay, so in the in the last one, we uh, had the sixth angel, and then the seventh angel came down with his feet on the uh, ocean and um, on the sea and on the land, telling John to eat the book, you know, so he's telling John to get ready. Now, the seventh angel, he hasn't done anything yet, but we have went through one woe. There were three woes. We have two more woes to go. So here we go. Uh, Revelation 11. <clears throat> and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Okay. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out. And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Okay? So, here he talks about the temple over in Jerusalem. He's talking about the temple of God, you know, because the, uh, the Jews worship in the temple. So he's talking about over in Jerusalem. He says, measure the temple uh, of God and his altar. And then he says, the people that are in there worshiping, take a, you know, take a measurement of that. And then he says, the court, which is outside, he said, leave it. Don't measure that. It is given unto the Gentiles in the holy city, for they they will tread underfoot forty and two months. Now, when they're saying there that he, they will tread underfoot, this is speaking about uh what's going on over there as far as the war. This is what I what I take this to be. Now you can inbox me or you can make your comment below behind the video. But the war over there. It says 40 and two months. So three years is 36 months, three years and seven months. So I believe this is going to be going on. I don't know how long it's going on now, but at least three and a half years, this war. And then it says, and I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now we know 365 is one year. So a thousand years, I mean, a thousand days is like three years, three years and 30 days, something like that. So for about three years, they're going to prophesy. This is going to happen. I don't know if it'll happen during the war or after the war. So we have to about five years at that. So we got 42 months of war. We got three years of prophecy. You see this? three, about five years so far, but we know that we are still going through, uh, everything that's happening. Then it says, um, now if I'm, I'm wrong, you guys can make comment below. Then it says these, the ones that are going to prophesy, the two witnesses are going to be in sackcloth for about three and a half years prophesying, you know, the time is at hand, get right. The Lord is coming back. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take a notion and say that this is would be Moses and Elijah. The only reason I'm going to say this is because when the Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured, after he rose and he walked upon the earth and then he was transfigured and he went up into heaven to sit by the sit by God, by the Lord, Moses and Elijah was standing by him on the Mount of Olives. 
So I'm going to say that these two witnesses will be Moses and Elijah. I'm not going to say it's John because John is telling the story. And uh, we're going to hear some more from John. And it says, and if any man will hurt these two witnesses, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So they will not be able to be hurt. They will try to hurt them. Then it says, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So, you know, the one that was over there in the Euphrates River that he let out, there he's going to make war with the two witnesses. I'm saying it's Moses and Elijah. If you guys got something different, you can write it below the comment. He's going to make war with them and kill them and will unalive them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, three and a half days, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the grave. They will just let them lie there for three and a half days. And uh, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prof prophets tormented them that dwelled on the earth. And after three days and a half, three and a half days, the spirit of life from God entereth into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven now the remnant is still here uh the original prophets or their offspring they are not left yet they haven't went to heaven and it says <clears throat> The second woe is past, and behold, a third woe cometh quickly, and the seventh angel sounded, this is the last angel, the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. <laughs> And the four, forgive me, and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped him, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great and should destroy them, which destroyeth the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple, the ark of his testimony and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay, so the stage is set right here that he should judge the nations. Now we're going to go on to 12 because I've I got a few more minutes. I can go do one more chapter and then I'm going to take a break. Okay, 12, Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. 
And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for the devour, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, let me tell you what this says about here. This is 12 revelations. Now, this is a great wonder in heaven. This woman that's clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. This is the nation of Israel. The nation has the 12 stars, which represents the 12 patriarchs, the 12 who have fallen. The 12, the 12 stars, you know, the stars represent the angels. It represents the 12 tribes of Israel. The moon is the earth. She has the Lord upon her head, who's who's helping her, who's, who's, who's clothed her. She's clothed with his glory. The earth is beneath her, and she holds the tribes of Israel. Now, out of these tribes was birthed Jesus Christ, because he came along the lineage of, you know, David, of the people that were born, the line of Judah. So out of these tribes was birth Jesus and he's getting ready to come back into the world. He's going to come down here to claim the throne because he's the one that's going to be sitting on the throne to bring mankind back and to bring back the nations back, back up to heaven because they are still down there waiting for the Lord to come and help them. The people, uh, the 12 original who were, scattered abroad over in Israel. They're still waiting. So it says, the dragon stood before the woman, the dragon, the devil, you know, the devil's over there fighting, help, help, fighting the demonic spirit in the air. So the dragon stood before the woman, the woman is Israel, stood before the woman. The Lord is ready to come. But before the Lord come, before he come down to the earth, the devil is showing out. He he throws the stars. He throws the stars out and everything. But the man child comes down and he will rule with the rod of iron. The Lord Jesus will come down. He will come down to his throne, which is over there. He will come down. The woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. And they should feed her thousand, two thousand and three score days. So for so many years, feed her there a thousand, two score and three score days. So I think three, a thousand is like three years. So she will be fled into the wilderness. That's the people that are over in Israel who are the saints of God. They will go into the wilderness for a number of years and they will be taken care of in the wilderness that where they have a place prepared and they should feed her there they that that God will prepare a place for them in the wilderness because it's going to be torn down over there where they are now okay and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought his angels and prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So this says that Michael is going to fight against the angels, and the angels will, the angels of uh, the dragon will not be there. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his, of, of his Christ.
for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So he's going to be cast down so he can no more cause sin, death, or damage. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoicing ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. Now he's on the earth. The devil is on the earth. And having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short, very short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So he's going to persecute the Jews because they're going to make the Lord come down from heaven. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time in a time, which I just told you, and half a time. I don't know if it's two and a half years, but from the face of the serpent, she will stay there and she will be nourished. Nobody will bother her, which is the Israel, the Jewish people. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. He's going after the woman, going after them that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, dried up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So the waters were dried up, there was no flood. And the dragon was wroth, was upset with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he could not do nothing with the true saints. So he said, okay, I'm going to go for your offspring. So now he said, you have some leftover seed in the earth that's keeping the commandments of God. He said, I'm going to war against them because I can't get you. God protected them, right? So over here in 13, I'm going to get on because I got to get this one more done. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads. I <laughs> hope I don't have no nightmare. This beast has seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn, his horns, ten crowns. And upon his head, the name of blaspheming. And the beast, which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Now, where you hear this at, just this imagery, this imagery talking about the leopard. Let's go back. Hold on. You know, I got something wrote down about this leopard. Because we were talking about Persia and all of them and one of the Roman Empire okay it said the Roman Empire fourth beast the Roman Empire was Julius Caesar which one did it represent okay Nebuchadnezzar Empire here it was the eagle with the wings Alexander the Great was a leopard the Roman Empire. I don't know which one the Roman Empire represented. It might have been, see, Nebuchadnezzar it says a bear represent King Cross. Persian, the Persian Gulf was a bear. So we got the bear. And then the Roman Empire was. I don't know what the Roman Empire, I don't know if it was a leopard or not. One was an eagle. Alexander the Great was a leopard. The bear was the Persia. The Roman Empire. Hold on. Let me take a look. I'm going to tell you about it. Hold on. Where are we at right here? It says, let me tell you about this. His horns are ten crowns and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Okay. So this is going to be a, a big amount of nations, like ten nations together. A lot of nations. 
The beast I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and he had the mouth of a lion. So this is going to be a couple of nations together. And the nations together are going to be given great authority. The nations are going to be working together and they're going to be given great authority to work along with the dragon, which is called Satan. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, which is the serpent gave power unto whoever was in charge. And then it says, worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. So we know that's going to be, you see, 36 is what? Three years. Three years and a half of a year. Continue unto power three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell Upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life and of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause them as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the name of the beast of the number of his name here is wisdom let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six and the next one will be 14 but we're going to take a break now when i come back i'm going to give you the definition of 13, because I didn't do that too good regarding the beast and who was going to be giving out. I don't know a lot, but I'm going to research what I can find about 13. That's the only one that I believe I have to explain.